Hi, it's Rusty with Springfield Leather again. You know, the point behind doing these videos is not to cover every single thing, and everybody finds out that there's a million ways to skin that poor cat. But the idea is to kind of give some hints and some tips and to help people to get started so that they're more successful with the proje or projects that they're trying to accomplish. So when we do these, we cover a few things, but know that there's always more ways to do everything. So real quick, what I thought we would do on this video was is to kind of cover finishing an edge. And primarily this is going to work with vegetable tan leathers, things that you've made, holsters and sheaths and things of that nature out of. But the principles will apply a lot of times to chrome tan leathers too. Maybe you've made a journal, maybe you've made a, a bag or something and you've got some edges on it. We're going to cover a couple of quick things give you some ideas maybe it'll help something that you're getting ready to do turn out just a little bit better so what I've got is I've got a piece of vegetable tan leather and as you can see it's nothing special I've got a number three edger and when you when you make something and you've got that square edge it's nice to have a slick rounded off edge and that's what these edgers are good for and if you watch you it's all in the wrist really you have gotta get the right angle and once you start on that, you can run that edger down the side and it'll really give you a nice finished edge. And obviously it works better on the front than it does on the back. But the principle is there. Usually what a person might do when they first get this is they'll take some jeweler's rouge and put it on the back of a, of a piece of veg tan leather like this and strop it a few times like you would a, a swivel knife and it helps to polish that and it helps to kind of sharpen it up just a little bit so that you get a good, clean cut. Now, I'm not sure how well you can see that, but it's rounded those edges off just a little bit so that it's starting to get a nice edge. Now, if you have taken this and you've put it together and you've glued it and you're getting ready to sew it, a sander works great to just take and sand along those edges and get them flat, nice, and even. And then you can bevel those edges and it allows you to have a nice, tight, clean look so that you got a, 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 a attractive edge, you might say. Now, once you've gotten to that point, you can leave it like that, but there's a few different things that you could do to make it just a little bit better. And I, it, instead of dragging out a bunch of water, I grabbed a napkin with a little bit of water in it primarily on vegetable tan leather. You put a little bit of water on that and let it set. This is a piece of canvas cloth. You can use denim, you can use a burnishing wheel of some sort, but if they don't have any of that, all you need really is a piece of canvas and some elbow grease. And just draw it the same direction five or six times. And the harder you draw it, the more times you draw it, the slicker that edge will get and the more the burnishing will work on that edge and the nicer edge you'll have. Now, with that being said, that would be a minimum. That would be about the, the least that you're going to do. Something that some people use too is an edge slicker. I've seen people mount these on a drill press, just run them with that. Um, usually, you can run it down that side, it does the same thing. It slicks that edge up. Again, this is kind of a minimum. Another one that they're making, and, and people make these themselves a lot of times, is just a, a piece of hardwood with some grooves in it. And those grooves allow you to do the exact same thing. Now, when you use water like that, you've burnished the edge, but it's really not probably going to stay that way. So, what you can do is you can do this, dye it, put some finish on it, put some wax on it, and, and redo it and buff it out. Let's say you use a, a finish like a, uh, an acrylic finish, maybe leather balm with atom wax or something to that effect. That's going to give you a, an edge that's pretty decent, but again, you, you've stepped up about halfway. You really could do more. And one of those ways that you could do more is a product called gum trag for the sake of not being able to always pronounce the gum tragacanth. Anyway, 
it's a it's kind of a funny product you put that on the edge let it sit there for a few minutes and then slick it down and it is going to stay the beauty of it is, is that it also works really nice i'm not sure if you can see that on the back of there you've kind of got those fuzzies if you'll take that gum trag and you can apply it just about any way you want take and put it on with a sponge even rub it in there and let it set for just a couple minutes it kind of smells like pine saw to me for whatever reason you got to know that we do these through day through the day during business hours so we get all kinds of stuff in the background this is called a glass slicker I'm not sure how well you can see it but it basically is just about a quarter inch piece of glass that has a nice beveled edge all the way around it and you can use a hard block you can use a hard wood um, something that's going to give you a real good solid hard surface and some people are familiar with pasted back leather that's basically what you're going to end up with and it will stay that way now good and bad one once the gum track is on there it will it acts as a dye blocker it will block the majority of dye that you're trying to put on so if you were going to dye the product i would recommend that you dyed it first then did this with your gum track and then you know used it as a uh, as a blocker uh, some people will use it and, and put some dye over it and it will accept a little bit but don't expect it to accept much as far as dye goes but again if you take that and put that on the edge like that that is going to give you in my opinion just about the best edge that you're going to get because that will mat that down and it'll stay down and it looks good that way now these principles work on chrome tanned leather to a degree uh, you have to know that chrome tanned leather is just a different animal entirely and so you know a little bit of experimenting is going to go a long ways in helping you to see what's going to give you the product that you want and it's funny because you talk to people and they say well i've done it this way forever but i was thinking about changing well why were you thinking about changing well, i don't know if it's been working not always a necessarily a reason to have to change that's going to give you something nice i thought i'd take a second too and help you to know that there are ways to end up with a really nice edge too if you've got a leather that's not struck all the way through meaning the dye didn't penetrate all the way through black on top black on bottom this natural color in the middle this is called a yankee wax is what we refer to it as and basically what you do is is you put it on a burnishing wheel maybe the wheel is made of a canvas piece you put it on there and it is basically a crayon and you burnish that into it and what that does is is that friction will melt that wax right down into the edge gives you a great looking edge in my opinion also helps to mat it down and i'll just do a little bit of it so that you can see it now you've got to realize though that me doing that by hand is giving you nothing in comparison to what it looks like when it's been ran on a buffing wheel um, unfortunately maybe you only have a dremel it will work uh, it's not always the easiest to get that edge nice the way you want it but it'll really slick that edge down gives you a nice finished edge and i'll tell you how to cheat too i've done some some edges put a strip of of high emboss leather down the center of a piece of veg tan on a belt strap or a buckle strap if you'll take crayons and mix them together you can kind of get different colors we carry this in black brown natural and tan but if you get an oddball color you want to make you might try a crayon you'd be surprised at how handy they come in or how they come in handy and they already kind of get you out of a pinch anyway i'm certain that there's more things that we could have talked about this is just a little something to help you out until next time